got Captain Ben Zion here, and I got with me Officer Mazaya. All right, today, man, we're going to do a class on black fear of white fragility. A lot of people don't even know uh, this word even exists. So we're going to go in the dictionary. We're going to get the definition of white fragility. What do you got? The definition of white fragility. Okay. Discomfort. So it's a discomfort feeling. So um, this is something when someone feels discomfort, read. And defensiveness. And they're going to be on the defensive side, read. On the part of a white person. On the part of who? A white person. Who the Bible calls Esau. When confronted by information. So when you confront them about the facts of, uh, of, of slavery, about the facts of the civil rights movement, about the facts uh, of, of what's going on today, of the racial inequality, read. About racial inequality. Okay. And injustice. So this is the feeling that comes over white people when you speak about the racial equality and injustice about uh, uh, what's been done to us or what's uh, what has been done and what's being done to us today all right that feeling is called what white fragility all right so let's go to job chapter 9 verse 24 the book of job chapter 9 and verse 24 all right the earth is given into the hand of the wicked all right so because the way they got the privilege of feeling like this is because what the earth is given into the hand of the wicked the most high gave the earth into in control of the wicked so the wicked is now able to control the earth they are able to control how you feel they're able to control your social media they are able to control uh how you think all right read he covers the faces of the judges thereof so the uh the wicked is going to cover the faces of the judges thereof so uh if, if so if if the truth is that the judges are black people they're gonna say no nah, they're white. So if the ultimate, uh, the the ultimate judge, okay, is Christ. If if the Bible says that, or the truth is that he's a black man with woolly hair, skin like brass, burnt in the furnace. No, the the wicked is going to say, no, he looks like me, the oppressor. And when you speak uh, to the oppressor or to white people about this situation, they'll say, oh, it doesn't matter what color he is. It doesn't matter. He's a rainbow. That's called white fragility. They get on the defensive mode, and they'll then they'll start. They'll call. They'll say you're teaching hatred. That's right. All right. That's called white fragility. A lot of people don't know this. All right. Is that it on that scripture? If not, where and who is he? They say if not, if this ain't the man, where and who is this guy? Okay. All right. They got their own definition in the Bible. I mean, in the in the uh, in Google, it's called white fragility. Give me Psalms 58. The book of Psalms, chapter 58, and verse 3. So check it out. Check it out. Listen. The wicked are estranged from the womb. So the Bible said that this wicked man is going to be estranged from where? The womb. Meaning as soon as he fall out of his mama, he's going to be estranged. Read. They go astray. They go what? Astray. They go astray. They go away from God. Read. As soon as they be born. As soon as they be born. Read. Speaking lies. They do what? Speaking lies. They speak lies. That's what they are born to do, to speak lies. Okay? Read. The poison is like the poison of a serpent. So the poison, the lies that they're speaking is like the poison, like their social media, like their news outlets, like uh, 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 their television shows, all right, like their religions, like their politics, okay, uh, like their economic system, everything that is set up, okay, speaking what? Speaking lies. They speak lies. That's what they love to do. Read. They are like the deaf adder. All right, they like the deaf adder. That's a snake. All right, a snake cannot hear. So you can't talk to him. You can't tell a snake when he's going to bite you. So this dude is like a deaf adder, man. It's like you you, you, you could tell him, man, look, we're not speaking hate. We're not a hate group. He can't hear you. He a damn snake. That's right. You know what I mean? A snake ain't got no ears. All right? So he like a deaf adder. Read. That stoppeth her ear. Okay. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. All right, they're not going to hearken to the voice of what? Charmers. Of charmers. Okay, read. Charming never so wisely. All right, charming never so wisely. Let's get let's go to Rock chapter twelve and verse sixteen right quick, just to show you these people were born to speak lies. Okay, so it's called white fragility. Is what they use a feeling that comes over them. All right, when they begin to start speaking their lies against the racial injustice and equality that's done to the Israelites scattered abroad. Listen. The book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 16. Uh-huh. 
An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. See, the Bible says our enemy. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's see who the enemy is. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. In this case right here, who is the enemy? It says an enemy will speak sweetly. I'm talking about he got some good things to say with his lips, okay? Everything's going to be all right. We're going to give you justice. We're going to give you peace, all right? I read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 uh -huh. and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Lord was going to bring us back into oppression again. Read with ships. And this time we was going to go on cargo slave ships. Read by the way of I spake unto thee. Uh -huh. Thou shall see it no more again. Yeah, we wasn't going to see our homeland Jerusalem or the western coasts of, uh, of Africa. No more. Read. And there. And there when you got off the slave ship. Ye shall be sold. We was going to be sold. Unto your enemies. Unto who? Your enemies. So your enemies are the ones who sold us. Your enemies are the ones who taught us how to read. Our enemies are the ones who taught us the understanding of the Bible. Our enemies are the ones who are lying to us today. All right, read. For bond men. And who's going who's gonna to be slave men? And bond women. And who's going to be slave women? And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. Go back to Psalms 58. Now listen. The book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 16. Uh -huh. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. So an enemy is going to speak sweetly with his lips. So the people that sold us is always going to be speaking sweetly with their lips. Read. But in his heart. But in his mind, the heart is the mind. Listen. He imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. And he imagineth how to keep us in the ghetto. Mm. How, to, how, to, how to throw us in the pit. How to keep us at the bottoms of, the, of, of society. All right. This is the matter. You think uh, uh, they really going to let us ever be equal to them? Never. No, no master is going to let the slave ever be equal to him. All right. Read. He will weep with his eyes. And he'll weep with his eyes. He'll sit there and look sad. And some of them might just sit up there and really cry. Turn all red and pink in the face like they really care for the Israelites. Like they really care for the blacks and Hispanics and the Native Americans. Read. But... If he find opportunity, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. He will not be satisfied with killing you. He will not be satisfied with leaving you in the ghetto. He will not be satisfied with putting uh, heroin in the community. Now he got to put crack in the community. He not going to be satisfied with putting just crack in the community. Now he got to put pills in the community. He not going to be satisfied with just putting pills in the community. Now he going to put medicated marijuana in the community. All right? He's not going to be satisfied with only just that. He's going to put guns and bullets in the community That's for right. us to kill up one another. He's not going to leave off until he's uh he's till he's satisfied. And the Bible said that he ain't going to be satisfied until when? To not be satisfied with blood. And he's not going to be satisfied with blood. All if, right? if adversity come upon thee. All right? And if, if trouble come upon you. Thou shalt find him there first. You're going to find this white man. He's going to be there first with his government assistance, right? Read. And though he and, pretend. Okay, read that clear. And though he pretend. And though he pretend, he, he going to lie. To help thee. He going to act like he really helping the black community. Read. Yet shall he undermine thee. And yet shall he listen to nothing that you say. All he wants you to do is vote for him. All right, so he can get the job. All right, so he can oppress you the way he wants to oppress you. All right, so let's go to Psalms 55 and verse 1. All right, white fragility. All right, it's the feeling, it's a discomfort that they feel, they have come upon them when you speak about the racial injustice or inequality that's been done to your people. All right, read. The book of Psalms chapter 55 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. So the words of this wicked man's mouth was what? Smoother than butter. Man, it's smoother than butter. He a lie and you don't even know he lying. All right, because he make it sound so smooth and good. Read. But war was in his heart. But what? But war was in his heart. But war is always in his heart. Why do you think we went from the slave trade to the uh, uh, civil rights movement, to the Jim Crow laws? All right, from the Jim Crow laws to the, to the, uh, to the drug epidemic. Now we're in, 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 in chemical and psychological warfare with this same dude because he is speaking what? His words are smoother than butter. All right? Keep reading. His words were softer than oil. All right, his words are softer than oil. He always trying to say uh, out like he's out to help us. All right? Read. Yet were they drawn swords. All right? Yet were they drawn swords. Yet was his words nothing but destruction and death to the Israelites. Okay? Let's go to Micah. Chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Read what you got. Woe to them. So woe means destruction unto who? To them. Talking about the wicked. Read. 
that devise iniquity. They devise iniquity. They think of ways to keep us in sin. Read. And work evil upon their beds. They, they think about this while uh, at, at nighttime. Okay, they laying in the bed thinking of ways to make money uh, to keep us in sin. Read. When the morning is light. Okay, when the morning comes. All right, when the daytime comes, it's time to get up. They practice it. They practice it. They they sit up there and practice what they sit up there and thought about. Read. Because it is in the power of their hand. Because what? The world was given into the hands of the wicked. And the right. things that they are, they can practice is in the power of their hands to do these things. Okay? All right? And when you speak about the wicked that they practice, mm -hmm. this call and, and the feeling that they get is called white fragility to make you feel like, oh, you a black racist now. Okay? All right? Is that it? And they covet fields. And they do what? Covet fields. They covet fields. One field they covet is called North, Central, and South America. All right? They covet fields. They want that. They had to come get that. Okay, read. And take them by violence. They do what? Take them by violence. No, they ask people. Take them by violence. And these people will take these fields by violence, by the sword, by guns, okay? By nuclear uh, warheads, okay? They take what they want uh, by violence. Read. And houses. And, and they take it by violence and what? And houses. And houses. And take them away. And they take them away. And they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. All right. They oppress a man in his house, a man in his what? Heritage. And when you talk about the oppression that they oppress us with, the feeling that, they, that comes over them is called white fragility. All right. So what we're doing is biblical. All right. The scriptures tell us... Uh, Excuse me to uh, to go out into the highways and the heads and compel our people to come in, whether it be on social media or whether it be uh, uh, in the streets. Okay, so we go out and we tell our people about the atrocities, about the uh, the bad things that that have happened to uh, our people. And when you speak to them about it, the feeling that comes over them is called white fragility. Give me uh, Amos five and ten right quick. Amos chapter five and verse ten. They hate for you to bring up the past on what their grandparents are uh, doing to us, all right? Uh, uh, their great-grandparents done to us. They hate to, to bring up the civil rights movement. The only thing they want to talk about the civil rights movement is who? Dr. King, all right? Because he told us to suffer peace, uh, peacefully, all right? So when you talk about anything else besides Dr. King and uh, the sit-in or, uh, uh, or Rosa Parks, uh, something like that, now that you want to tell you, you, you can't talk about Malcolm X. Right. Don't don't talk about uh, uh, Marcus Garvey. Don't talk about people like that. All right. Let's talk about people that taught us how to suffer peacefully. All right. Read what you got. The book of Amos chapter five and verse ten. Uh -huh. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. So they hate people that correct them where? In the gate. Off top. At the door. They hate it. Read. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. All right. And they hate people that speak uprightly. All right. So let's go to uh, go to. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Corinthians 2 and 15 right quick. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. All right. Because they, they, they hate when we speak the truth. All right. That's what the scriptures say. They hated him that rebuketh in the gate. All right. And when we speak truth, the feeling that comes upon them is called white fragility. To, uh, to make black people feel like you're being the racist. You're the one wrong for speaking to me like this. All right. Watch this. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh-huh. For we are unto God a sweet savior. So we got you got to understand the most high have taken the foolish foolish things of this world and made us a sweet savior. All right, read of Christ. Okay, and we do this for Christ. Read in them that are saved. Uh huh. And in them that perish. All right, of them that are saved. All right, and them that that die that perish. Read the book of Second Corinthians chapter two and verse sixteen to the one. We are the savior of death unto death. All right, so to one, we are the savior unto death unto death, meaning we are uh, the smell of death until, uh, 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 in, 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 in their nose, okay? Right. We're, we're the smell of death when they see us teaching the truth, all right? Teaching the truth about slavery, teaching about the civil rights movement and why we went through it, all right? It's, it's like a death, the smell of death. It's like a dead corpse in their nose, read. And to the other. And to the other people that's in, uh, um, and to the other people that's keeping the commandments, read. The savior of life uh, unto life. All right, to the Israelites, we are the savior of life unto life. Okay, is that it? And who is sufficient for these things? All right, who's sufficient for these things? Read. That's it. Verse 16? That's 16, yes, sir. All right, give me Job 15 and 20. Job chapter 15 and verse 20. So the scripture just said, man, look, when we teach this truth, it's like the smell of death. You know what I'm saying? To the enemy. So 
when when you the smell of death, man, it's it's it's, it's a very awful smell. All right. They can't stand it, in other words. Read. The book of Job, chapter 15, and verse 20. Uh -huh. The wicked man travel, traveleth with pain all his days. All right, so the wicked man is going to travail with pain all his days. Read. And the number of his years is hidden to the oppressor. All right, so the number of his years are what? Hidden to the oppressor. All right, it's hidden to the oppressor. Read. A dreadful sound is in his ears. All right, a dreadful sound, meaning oh, the worst sound ever is in his ears now of, of us getting an understanding of this Bible and teaching the truth. Read. In prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon him. All right, in prosperity, and while, while he's her ruling the earth right now, the destroyer, the most high God that's going to do what? Shall come upon him. All right, it's going to come upon him. Is that it? That's it. All right. So with that, hey, that was 15 minutes with the captains. Hope y'all enjoyed that right there. Hey, we're going to say Shalom, most high Christ. Blood. Shalom, most high Christ. Blood. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.